courtesy of Rico Suave, right? Look at this. Look at Brendan in the airport. <laughs> Look at Papa. Look at our Papa. Look at him. <laughs> Everybody fucking clamoring to get his autograph. He's just head first, not wanting to look at anybody. No distractions. Rushing back to the critter. Rushing back to little Bosty, right? Rushing back to coach the fucking the kids, right? Rushing rushing back to coach to coach the Mexi kid, right? The Mexi kid. <laughs> he just looks really sad. I feel bad. He looks really sad. Like he left his fucking charger at the hotel, you know. Maybe lost his wallet or something, or he fucking forgot to pack his fucking neck pillow. He just looks really sad, like, or he forgot his headphones. To be fair, that's, that's, is it me? Is it me? Please tell me in the stream chat. Is it kind of psycho behavior to be standing at the gate with no headphones on? Just be listening to the airport noise. Do you guys do that? Do you guys look, stand in the airport and just absorb all the airport noise and announcements and shit? I have my headphones on all the way, like. Listen to some kids and people having conversations behind me about what restaurant they want to go to. That's like he's just standing there with fucking no headphones. <laughs> just like <laughs> looking at the gate. <laughs> Don't you find that weird? No headphones, just like exactly Uche, raw dog in airport air. Like, can you imagine going to the airport with no headphones on? Just just like just standing there staring at the fucking the ticket, whatever, the, the gate attendant, whatever the woman's name is. They're always sassy as well, by the way. The women are, and sometimes the gay guys that man those fucking gates are always fucking sassy, isn't it? They're always really cunty when you ask them a question. Like, have you never flown before? Well, yeah, but I'm asking you a fucking question, you absolute ditzy tart. Give me the answer. But yeah, he looks absolutely psychotic just standing there staring. Look at him. No headphones, just like. And of course, he's not even looking left to right. He's just. <laughs> Maybe he did serve in the military or something. Because didn't go. Southwest Airlines is just sad. Okay, maybe that's why as well. Maybe it's that's why it's Southwest. Because thing a go, but he's not even like. <laughs> I've never seen someone just stand like that. He's not even. Honestly, he's going through it. He's probably he's probably regretting. He's probably he's what's that word called? He's probably um upset he has to go home isn't it that's the real reality of it like he probably doesn't even want to go home like fuck <laughs> he just looks so sad and serious i feel so bad for him but where's the headphones bro like come on man like do something bro everyone's on their phone talking to people looking in their bag brendan's just like focused focused you know, yeah, she looks like you looks like an air marshal. Like, Sometimes I like to think when I get on a plane, people think I'm the marshal. You know, there's a marshal on the flight. Yeah. I come on that bitch, my tattoos are. I'm like, oh, they probably think I'm the marshal. <laughs> no, no, dude, maybe the marshal mellow. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thinks you're the fucking marshal. You don't think so <laughs> on the flight? <laughs> like if shit goes no, down, no, they'll think dude. they're like, oh, that guy got this. <laughs> Bro, they know there's a real marshal somewhere. You on dress this like a thick girl going to Coachella, dude. There's no way. <laughs> Anybody thinks you the marshal? No, maybe they think I'm dressing like that, like the not to, you what? know, like to fit in. No. Ugh. Anyway, that's Brendan in the airport. Somebody spotted him. T Fat K live happened. T Fat K live happened, and it looked kind of sad. I'm not gonna lie. T Fat K live happened, and it looks kind of sad. I'm not gonna lie. Look at these fucking images. I took them from Instagram accounts that I found. That people were posting some stuff on there. And in all the pictures, Brendan does look kind of sad. I'm not going to lie. So this is someone posted it with a caption that says, I've been listening to the podcast for eight years and finally got to see them. And look at Brendan fixing the mic. Brian Callen's there. The consummate theatre boy. Loving the attention, right? And Papa is just like hating life. Look at Papa. Look at Papa hating life. Fixing the fucking mic stand. Not enjoying a single minute of the time that he's there. Looking glum and sad while Brian's at the Vulcan, loving it. Vulcan, I love you! Right, look, look at Brian. Brian's got his arms up, loving every minute of it, loving the attention, right? 
loving it. And Brendan is just, what's happening, man? He's got a lot on his mind, didn't it? He must have a lot on his mind. We've got this pick of him. Um, we got obviously that pick of him. He's not he's not having a good time really right now, isn't it? He's not really enjoying life, this old Brendan guy. He's not enjoying it. Look at him. Each picture he just looks like down and glum. You know? <laughs> he doesn't look like he's having fun in the slightest. <laughs> right? Okay, cool. Another picture. You also see this picture here for this other user, right? Look at this other picture here at the Vulcan. Look how much fun Callan's having. Callan's loving. Callan, that's one thing you, you can say about Callan. He loves attention. He loves being a center of attention. He's a proper consummate attention seeker, consummate theater kid. He loves it. He's on stage. That's his home. That's where he feels more comfortable. And Brendan, on the other hand, is just weirdly looking at him like, smiling just with his mouth but not really with his eyes it doesn't really look like he's happy still right you know there's not really a lot of like real love and humor there he's just there for the you know just there to be there really but isn't that the most saddest live podcast you've ever seen in your entire life no couch no graphics no screen no props just a couple of middle-aged men sitting on stools. This is the live podcast. Man, this is the fall-off, isn't it? This is the fall-off. They're at the stepmother ship, the Vulcan Gas Company. I wonder, if you owned the Vulcan, would you be happy about Brendan referring to your club as the stepmother ship continuously? Would that really make you happy that you have to give this guy money who's not even selling tickets? You can't even shift tickets, right? He's got your club half empty and he keeps referring to it as the step mothership, dismissing it like, God damn, bro. And again, I'm sure live podcasts are hard to get right. Most of you guys in the stream chat probably have had experience with them. Um, they're hard to do right, I would assume. But most of live podcasts that I've seen, they include some level of like prop, whether they like try and replicate the actual you know set that they have a you know at home or in the studio whether they have like screens and shit these guys did nothing they just turned up sat on the stalls big up joe rogan and just you know sat there doing their regular shit that they always do no preparation no work no nothing bare min this is the another example of why they're at where they're at they're at the bare minimum nothing more just sat on stalls spoke shit like they usually do on their show and collected the money and probably charge people for fucking meet and greets as well right charge for meet and greets charge for fucking pictures all that malarkey he quit stand up to be with his family and then immediately flew to austin to do a live podcast wtf is the difference exactly 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 i was just about to make that point but i'm curious big up Assad for making the point for me for beating me to the punch why would you go to austin to do a live comedy podcast when the fire and the kid has always been associated with LA, right? What was that thing they used to call, what was that thing they had? Um, do you guys remember? What was that um, thing they had about the fight club? What was it called again? Oh, what was the name of it? It was like a street, something fight club. Do you guys remember the, the, the name? But it's always been an LA thing, but then they just wanted to just get close to Rogan. Rogan wanted nothing to do with them, and now they're just stuck in the Vulcan. That's it, Abbott Kenny, big up Assad, Abbott Kenny Fight Club. So it's always been associated with LA, the fire and the kid. And maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic for these guys and being a little bit too, um, you know, I'm looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. But I have a feeling if they did this show in LA, they could probably sell way more tickets than they did in Austin, Texas. I think so. According to people on the fire and the kid Reddit, they sold, they couldn't even sell half. So they sold under half. The, f the, the ground floor area was somewhat full, but the balcony was completely fucking empty. But I think they could probably sell out a decent sized venue in LA. Probably. My, my assumption would be. So, really? Vegabond said no. You're wrong. They can't sell in LA. So they actually made the right decision to go to Austin, you think? Damn, son. 
I don't know. Maybe it's me. I just always associate the Friday the Kid with LA. I associate it with fucking. That's how they started. That's how they got their start. The T-shirt and the little Abbott family, the Abbott Kenny Fight Club thing. The food truck diaries and the food truck, the MMA thing, the Rogan thing, the comedy store. I just associate everything with the fire and the kid with LA. Like, but I guess you're right. Maybe they, maybe that's the reason why they went to Austin in the first place. Why else would they go to Austin if they can't, you know what I mean? To not sell tickets. But anyway, that aside, it looks fucking sad. Looks depressing. Doesn't really look like they got up to much. But somebody on the fire and the kid Reddit actually went. Right, so big up this user, Duck Smokes Quack. For you needy cats under the la is uh, under my last post. Here's my review of the T Fat K live in Austin with pics and proof that I was there. So this person posted a picture of them actually in a crowd where you can see Brendan and Brian there on the stage at Vulcan. Um, I'll show you the other picture as well. And there's our picture of them bringing out the special guest, which is Clint. You guys hear that? The special guest that they were, you know, teasing and suggesting that it could be or basically trying to hint that it was, oh, my God, look at that guy wearing a golden hour jacket. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If this guy's a dad and he has children, you have to be worried. If you have kids and you, oh, oh, anyway, anyway. <sighs> Um, big up Chin for being the special guest for the T Fat K Live. Even though they were hinting and making it seem like it was going to be Rogan, it wasn't. It was Chin instead. Um, did he go up there and sing? That would be hilarious if Chin went up there and did his cry singing in front of a room full of mostly men. That would be right on point with T Fat K. Um, but instead, I think he just got up there awkwardly, did his Chin thing, and went off. But let's actually read the review of what happened because I'm curious to see what actually how the show was um for this user here courtesy of the final kid reddit because it looked really depressing based on these pictures i was able to steal from people's instagram accounts it looks really utterly depressing brandon did look like he looked he's having a good time to begin the bingo card was for the memes so all you really lags and talks to me nice anyway there was a little over 100 people there surprisingly and the capacity of the vulcan is what what's the capacity of the vulcan again i think it's 600 right Vulcan comedy club capacity 658 fucking hell bro and this person saying there was only a hundred people there 100 god damn with nobody on the balcony level so the balcony level I think we already saw this right is that can you see that there so that's the layout of the club so you've got this main ground floor bit, this bit where the DJ booth is, I guess they can move it around. It's almost like modular is where the stage is. And so this area was where the hundred people were and this area, the top here was completely empty. So that bar was closed and the other bits were closed. Like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. This is the kind of shit that will make you want to quit for life. 100 people in the 600, Jesus. Anyway, for reference, just about the whole main level was filled. I'll let y'all look at the Vulcan Gas Company layout since I'm writing this all out for y'all. So Callum was um, certainly carried the show for the hour that it went on for and Bapa was going ham on that tobacco pouch throughout. <laughs> of course, jokes about COVID were spouted. Oh my God, bro. 2024, TFAT K Live and they were doing COVID 19 jokes of course they had to know that there were actually women there of course joe rogan imagine not being able to mention rogan's name of course for your vaughn and the like were name dropped and of course the slurring of words by papa was rampant Callan actually surprised me by straight up hitting papa with so you're just not doing comedy anymore right question to which papa responded something along the lines of i just can't right now because of the kids <laughs> <laughs> so everything we see on the reddit and on these streams and on the fire and a kid own posts and videos they just repeated the same things on the live show nothing different no new content no new hot takes no bespoke experience the same shit you hear from these guys via the clips that i get posted on the reddit the things i talk about the stuff that you see on social media the same shit they, they talk about every single day they did on a live show, but you had to pay for the fucking privilege to see them. Such a good deal. 
I just can't right now because of the kids. It's been too tough to squeeze all that in with them. There was a very noticeable tension following the question by Callan and I was holding in lots of laughter during that moment. So Callan hit him with a question that he didn't expect to hear during the live show and obviously Brendan being the guy that he is who doesn't like comfort, who doesn't like to be questioned or to be made like feel like that, he just was in a bit of a mood, I guess, to, throughout the entirety of the show. It continues. Another funny instance was when somebody asked his truck, no, somebody asked about his truck, the TRX, of course, and all I'll say is the next episode of Toontown should be a doozy. He supposedly totaled it, yet wants to buy the completely totaled vehicle back and fix it up for Toontown. My jaw dropped. He tripled down on my on being a gearhead too and begged uh, and bragged about his totally modded out truck. So now he wants to turn the whole car cr oh, He thinks he's being clever, isn't it? I told my car, now we're gonna turn it into a bit of content and make him so I guess he's waiting for the insurance money to come. Then when insurance money drops, he use that money to re what? Remod, refurbish, rebuild, just buy a new one. I don't know what he's gonna do. If it is if it has been told, I don't know what he's gonna do. Also during the Q and A portion, somebody asked about if they were gonna have any special guest. To which Papa said, supposedly Gordon Ryan. <laughs> Press X to doubt. Press X to doubt. Supposedly Gordon Ryan was supposed to be there, but he was having tummy issues. <laughs> <laughs> following that they decided to bring up clint who was pretty reluctant to go on stage as their special guest and they just sucked each other off on stage so it was meant to be first of all they said it was meant to be rogan or they hinted it was going to be rogan then allegedly it was meant to be gordon ryan he obviously you know flakes on them as usual most people do with them and then they just brought up clint on stage <laughs> overall karen certainly carried and Baba was doing whatever he could to get his voice heard whether it be awful ad-libbing or just outright trying to interrupt callan in which he was successful on several occasions to my utter disbelief the crowd seemed to be very much into it and that what they were blabbering on about I was having a bit of an existential crisis amongst those genuine fans of theirs. Anyways, given that we really don't know when Papa will ever be on stage again, it was worth it for the meme. Stay up, my fellow cats. P.S. Image of me. Or P.S. Imagine rocking a golden hour jacket. Yeah, true. Um, wow. To be fair, I'm not shocked that fans would enjoy it. I think T5K fans do exist. I know it seems a bit crazy to us because we would never you know be seen dead at such fucking events i know i wouldn't but i think legitimate tfat k fans do exist we know that right that is a thing legitimate tfat k fans are still out there are still doing their thing they still fucking love the content and they love these guys and obviously if you're gonna go see them you obviously should go see them and have a laugh why would you go see them and just be there to kind of you know fucking not enjoy the show but that being said it doesn't look like it was they didn't really do anything special for the fans you know that's the thing that i don't like about them i think again we can say they're not funny which they both aren't we can say they're super annoying we get it but one thing i don't like about them is that they don't really service their fans you know they don't really give their fans a reason to come out and see them they don't put on fun shows they don't do fun podcasts it's just a bit like dead you know what i mean they do the bare minimum and these fans have been holding them down for years bro 15 plus years through cancellations through hit pieces through documentaries whatever right some of their own friends in comedy have dropped them but these fans have still been there loyal right they buy fucking golden hour fucking jackets they buy fucking gold golden hour hideous fucking jackets right they're actual legit fans and they all they do is turn up to the comedy club and sit on a couple on a couple fucking stools and bring out their producer. Come on, bro. Come on. Make a little bit of effort. Like, make a little bit of effort. Try a little bit. Maybe bring those red chairs that you guys usually use in your podcast to kind of, you know, tie in with the show. Maybe have a, a poster, uh, you know, of the fucking neon sign that you have in your studio, the TFAK thing. Do something, bro. Like, give it you know spruce up a little bit look like you try to do something like i don't know 
no production quality, nothing. Just turned up to on stage and just like winged it. Probably didn't even do a rehearsal. Probably didn't do like a, you know, a run through. Nothing. Just sat on stage, said what they usually say on the podcast, collected the money and kept it moving. That's a really sad thing about it, you know? They don't really give their fans a reason to go out there and obviously purchase tickets to hang out with them. That's the only sad thing that I don't like about it, to be fair. But I'm not surprised that the show was um successful. I'm not surprised it's not successful. I'm not surprised that the fans had the fans had a good time. Um I am kind of surprised they couldn't sell more tickets. Um one hundred people, bro. One hundred people turned up. One hundred people turned up. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how much that's got to hurt? 100 people. 100. 100, it says here. 100. And the fucking capacity of that place, allegedly, according to fucking Google, is 650. <sighs> that's the kind of shit that make me want to quit. And, I've, and I could tell you, like, I've, I've had situations where I've DJed literally for one person one person sitting there drinking their beer and i'm djing like <laughs> i know how much that fucking hurts right but it's like a bar right it's not even you know it's not really that that even big of a place but <sighs> a comedy club has got 650 capacity you probably feel that more than mine honestly a bar that might hold like 70 people 100 people via a a venue that nearly has 700 capacity and you only have 100 people in there. You feel that space left by the 600 odd souls that didn't purchase a ticket. You feel that shit. You're definitely going to feel that shit. So, yeah. Um, maybe uh, another indication that, you know, it's, it's definitely over. You know, obviously we know that with Brendan's, you know, stand-up career basically being put on ice. But this is definitely an indication that it's not going to go anywhere soon. Anytime soon, you know? Um, it really isn't. So, R.I.P. the T Fat K live experience. The re the the redundancy is over. I think it's fair to say the redundancy is fucking over. That redundancy is done. There's no more redundancy. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think the redundancy is fucking finished. <laughs> Are people saying Jack Donner? He's saying it's three fifty seated. Okay, that's not too bad then. Three fifty seated for for one hundred is not too bad. So maybe or maybe I didn't read it correctly. Is that what is that what you're saying there? It's 350 seated. Maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe I didn't write it. I didn't really correct it. So maybe that's why it probably isn't such a bad thing. They aren't real people, brah. They chin travel alone with his Uber, pre with his Uber premium car. <laughs> his own socks. Big up game bread football. I hope you're good, my friend. <laughs> chin like driving across the country. Listening to his shitty tunes. On the way to Austin or playing fucking country music and tapping into his white side, right? The last time Papa hugged Chin like that, um, his neck snapped, exactly. Callan should be in a wheelchair. Jesus Christ, Tetris effect. Callan should be in a wheelchair. <laughs> That's a little bit extreme. If they're going to change... So if they're going to charge real money to watch a podcast, it better be fucking circus. Exactly, Jack Donny Jr., exactly. Damn how disappointed Brendan looks, exactly. I never wear shorts that don't cover your my knees. Yeah, they're quite short, isn't it? Chin's got some, but I think he's just showing off the tattoos. To be fair to him, I don't really, I don't really mind that too much. I think Chin's just trying to show off his tattoos. No, that's what he's basically doing. He wants to get the tattoos out there. Chin's showing off the tattoos. To be fair, he looks a lot more handsome here. Ladies in the ladies in the stream chat. If I have any ladies still watching what do you guys think doesn't chin look more handsome here than when he does in these food vlogs he looks a little bit more well put together no looks like a little bit more like a snack here what what, what are you guys saying for my gays and my ladies in the chat what do you guys think doesn't chin look a little bit of a snack here look, if you tilt your head be now be they'll just go this is emo or wag the dog to do addies and baddies on the road once a month on the road next to their dear leader <laughs> Now be uh, they'll just go. This is I am the wag the dog to the addies and buddies of the road. You think so? I don't think so, man. I think this is gonna do a lot of damage to their fucking ego and pride, brother. I don't think this is true. I don't think they're gonna. I think the whole red and sea thing is over. I think it's a one hit done affair. I don't think they're ever gonna go back. I think it's done, especially 
Vulcan, are they going to want to put up with this again? 600 capacity and you only sell 1,000 tickets. Even if it's 350 fucking seating, one, 100 tickets is still low. Still a low amount, bro. So I think this Red and Sea and this Wag the Tail, whatever it is, has not worked, bro. I think it's done. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'll be shocked if they come back again. Obviously, they probably still will, like you said, because they want to be next to fucking Bapa, fucking, you know, Daddy Rogan. They want to suck him off, right? Surely. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You have to have a little bit of sh Like, where's the shame, by the way? Where's the shame? Where's the pride? Like, <laughs> Josie, not much, but better. So you, to, you, you got to do this, isn't it? you got to like tilt your head to the side. <laughs> you got to cover one eye. <laughs> it looks okay there. <laughs> you got to do. You got. You got to do that. You got to squint for the glasses. <laughs> but he looks. He looks better there. He looks better there. He looks a little bit better there. He looks a little bit better. <laughs> look at Bab, Look at Brendan's face. Brendan doesn't look happy to be there at all, mate. Brendan does not look happy to be there. Look at. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so sad what's happening to him man what's happening to him what's happening to him what's happened to brendan why does he look so sad why is he so sad why let's <laughs> go <laughs> the moustache, right? The moustache. <laughs> and there's Chin. Oi. Maybe Josie was right. Maybe Josie was right. From far, it looks good, but up close. <laughs> Maybe Chelsea was right. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. God. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rick, you know what? Unironically, unironically, Brian Callum might be the most attractive guy in that studio i know he's a bit of a rapist allegedly i know he's old as fuck but he might be the least like jump scary of everybody there don't you think especially if he had like if you went to turkey and you got a new hairline and he maybe did some other bits of work he maybe is the most like you know well put together one all right if he doesn't do that whole peppy you know peppy le pew fucking haircut thing do you guys think Maybe he's the maybe he's a snack. Shane should absolutely ditch these chodis and start his own podcast. No doubt he'd do way more numbers and sell more tickets than Brendan and Ray Pest. They are a pair of grifting mongs. You never know, you know. If Chin actually pursued his own stand up no, his own podcasting career and tried to do like live shows or did like music things and shit, he might actually do pretty well. You never know. He actually has an engaged little fan base out there. In Chinsu Yi land. You never know. You never actually know. Big up Wingus McDingus. But yeah. Callan Chin. That is a fucking nightmare dream. Nightmare blunt rotation, isn't it, right? Brian Callan Chin and Papa. That is nightmare fucking blunt rotation. Anyway, um, what can you do? He's a skinny pecker energy, says Coiler. What, Brian Callan, yeah? Spinny. <laughs> Be your engine ranger for agreeing my hot take. Yeah, Brian Callan might be the actual snack of the group. Booth McGee is just old and someone might see him as a bag. Fake ass, Yakuza, Clark Kent. Fashion Roadman, big up my guy. What's happening? Never understood the hairline like that and not just going bored. Yeah, if you got a headline like that, hmm. Maybe a buzz cut. A buzz cut is close to bold, right? I think that would work out well. What do you think? I think I would keep it like a buzz cut. I think that works out. But then just go fucking crazy with a beard. Like, go like full fucking Viking with a beard. Like, that might be good. Or, just, or actually, 
if you're going to, I think actually it's better to go bald and then have the beard to be super big. Like the guy from, um, I don't know if you guys watch the channel called um, Biographics and shit, right? Um, it's really cool. And he's got other channels as well. Um, that guy, the host, he has a really epic beard and he's got, he needs a bit of a baldy. So that might work. To be fair, if that was me and I was boarding, I've always said I, I wouldn't even bother going Turkey. Fuck all that new hairline shit, all that fucking, I'm not that bothered. Like, just shave it bald or if you're really desperate, put a wig on. Fuck it. Go go to fucking Arrogant Tay or one of these kind of guys and get him to fucking install you a fucking nice wig. I swear to God. I would go bald or I'd fucking just grow a fucking crazy beard and or just put a wig on or something. Like The idea of like doing the in-between thing or going to Turkey, no thank you. No thank you. No thank you. But hey, what do I know? I fucking know. Okay, what do I know? Absolutely nothing. This is a really interesting post, right? That this person is speaking about. Because I feel like this is really interesting because I feel like it echoes a lot of my thoughts, right? This person says, can we just dwell a little bit more on the sheer insanity of Callan and Shorb performing at the Vulcan mothership and not, um, sorry, at the Vulcan and not the mothership, right? Let's actually read this post. I feel this is really funny. Like, I feel this detail just gets glossed over too quickly and we don't appreciate the sheer and utter gobsmacking insanity of it all. These are the two guys whose whole entire adult identities revolve around the proximity to Joe Rogan. They're supposedly the bestest boys. Um, Callan has known Rogan since the 90s. Rogan opened up to his own comedy club and both Brian and, Sh Brian and Brendan happen to be comedians. Yet they perform at another unaffiliated club that also happens to be 100 second walk down the street from Rogan's club. This is absolutely egregious. This is also insanely rude and disrespectful on Rogan's part, almost to an extent that should be friendship severing. Like your supposed best friend owns a comedy club, yet you're forced into a smaller venue down the street and to do your little show and go home without even talking to him. It's out of this universe insane. And Rogan not even going to throw you a little bone. You're just going to pretend you were 100 feet away from your best friend in the world. And you're just going to go home back to LA as if you two were never near each other. The whole thing is fucking bizarre. How can any of these people be considered your friends? <laughs> Absolutely killed it. And I agree. The funny thing about it is that I've said for the longest time that I honestly think this is my theory. And again, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to put it on record. People can hear this. Here's my theory. My theory is this. When the whole Brendan and Bobby thing went down or when the, when Kalila went on Trash Tuesdays and announced to the world that Brian, that Brendan was allegedly the guy who was responsible for texting her during Christmas, trying to hook up when she was still with Bobby Lee. And obviously, before that, Anne Liederman revealed that Brendan also might have been the guy, not by name, you know, they, they kind of hinted at it very aggressively, that um, Brendan was the one that offered Anne Liederman a truck walk and that Brendan was trying to hook up with Kalila, even though she was with Bobby Lee at the time. And she was obviously cheating on his wife, all that stuff, right? Cool. When that stuff happened and then the, you know, the the sort of like end of that was basically Brian and Brendan basically trying to bully Bobby as a way to kind of keep Kalila on a leash or something and stop her from talking on the pod and embarrassing them, whatever happened. But essentially that led to Bobby Lee kind of blowing up the whole thing around the comedy store and making it known that the comedy store is a bit of a boys club and that these guys run it a certain way. He doesn't feel comfortable there. They make it known that he's not part of the group. That's why he hasn't been on Rogan, blah, blah, blah. And then throughout that whole messy, you know, affair, it got revealed by Bobby Lee that Brian Callan had called Bobby directly and basically threatened him by using Rogan's name. And Brendan also said the same thing maybe to Kalila. Then word got back to Rogan and that's when Rogan went on the defensive. It was like, hey, I have nothing to do with this. I love Bobby Lee. He's my guy. Come on my show any time. And that kind of set the kind of the wheels in motion for Bobby Lee to go into a show later, which he did recently. So I think this is my theory. I personally think Rogan didn't know 
how those guys, Brendan and Brian, were acting behind him. I think he saw how they were going on in his presence, but I, I don't think he knew the extent of how those guys were using his name or using his friendship to kind of lord it over other comedians, to kind of, I won't say bully, but to kind of intimidate, act a bit like they're barely big balls and shit. I don't think Brendan, I don't think Rogan knew. I think he was a little bit naive, had his head in the sand, kind of didn't really pay attention to it. But obviously he got brought to light when that whole Bobby Lee thing happened. So, long long way to say, when that shit went down and then he eventually ended up moving to Austin, I think he made a promise to himself to try to rewrite those wrongs. He was like, hey, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to have people around me who kind of take advantage or, you know, who kind of use my name um, for their own personal gain. I'm not going to have just my friends play at the club, even if they're not funny because they're my friends, all that sort of stuff. So that's why he went to Austin. He sort of like changed his approach. And if you even if you check on Instagram and people who played it earlier, they're all these new kind of friends, right? From the Shane Gillises to the Brian Simpsons. They're all these new Rogan kind of comedy friends who he's kind of become friendly with in the recent years and shit. And obviously he's left behind the likes of Brian Callen and the likes of Brendan Shaw. Brendan has obviously performed at the comedy membership, but Brendan hasn't. But, you know, they're kind of all been left behind. But... The weird thing about Rogan is this. He's obviously given Brendan and Brian every hint that he's over them and he's moved on and they're not as close as they once were. But he's doing this really strange thing where he's not really fully breaking up with them. So he kind of treats them like they're not friends and gives them the signal they're not friends by never going on their show, never popping up to stuff that they're doing at like the Vulcan like this, um, not having them do the show at the Comedy Mothership or some shit, not letting them get any minutes on stage, not hanging out with them or going for dinner, like all these weird things that he's sending little micro signals like, hey, I'm not your friend anymore. But then he'll turn around and invite them to do the UFC Fight Companions. That's the weird thing about Rogan. I don't understand. So he's giving them every chance. He's giving them every indication, every hint that they're not friends anymore. But I don't blame them for still sucking up to Rogan because it's not like he's fully cut them off because he still invites Brandon on the show solo. He still invites Rogan on the show. Sorry, Brian on the show solo. He still has them on together to the fight companions. So I wonder what that's all about. Is it Rogan really not being, maybe being afraid of actually cutting them off in general or feeling bad about it? Because he's acting like, you know, he's over them by what this post said. I definitely agree, right? Going all the way to Austin to perform at some other club to do your live podcast when this guy's meant to be your best friend. Of course, you're not owed or entitled to anything, but if if Brian Callan's one of his best friends and Brendan's got the most highest appearances at the fuck, on the fucking JRE, you would assume you know hey can i perform at your club but he doesn't even do that so i wonder what's going on what do you think is going on because i'm not sure because if that was me and i was them i wouldn't talk i wouldn't say i wouldn't talk to rogan again but it'll make me look at him a bit differently i'm not gonna lie it'll make me look a bit differently i'll, I'll go to the stream chat in a minute do any of these guys have friends though will sasso john ever have been back on the show yeah um will sasso definitely ditched him for sure definitely ditched him after everything that happened i think he probably ditched more so Chris D'Elia because of all those allegations but yeah I don't know man wouldn't you guys wouldn't you be offended a little bit if you were if you were Brendan and Brian again they're not entitled to anything Drogan's given them a lot already but still like isn't that meant to be your friend you get no invite not even a chance to kind of hang out at the store and just like you know shoot the shit no quick like watching a show and shit nothing just completely get ignored I don't know, man. I don't know. I, it, it really hurt my feelings. I'm not going to lie. It actually hurt my feelings. I don't think Rogan is lying when he says that he doesn't run the mothership at all and that's all he tells them. Go through the book and manager. Leave me out of it. Yeah, I think that's convenient though, Jack Donnie Jr. I think he says that. It's probably true, technically, but I think he also does that to avoid, um, you know, people he doesn't want to book, basically. But if he wants to book his friends, he can just get them to play. I think that's obviously something he could do because he fucking owns a club. You know what I mean? Why else would you wouldn't? You know what I mean? Like I don't really see why else would you own a club if you couldn't just do that. But I don't know. Big up, um, Abe Martinez.
Hess disrespecting him not let them go to mother shit. He just, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it too deeply and it's not that deep, but I would be genuinely pissed off if that was me. I'd be so pissed. I'd be so pissed. Because especially with Rogan with Brendan, the Brian Callan thing's a bit complex because of all the fucking shit that happened, right? Um, with Callan getting accused of rape. But if that was Brendan, I'd be like, hold on. How was I good enough to perform with you at the comedy store? But now you have your own club. Suddenly you have standards. Like, do you know what I mean? I'd be, I'd be really annoyed at that. Like, hold on. You let me perform when you did your Joe Rogan Presents at the store. Now you have your own club. Suddenly I'm worse. And back then he was only one year in. So imagine Rogan's, sorry, Brendan's material has never been good. I don't think. I don't think Brendan ever had a time where he was good at stand up. Like a year in, he was probably the same level of shit we're seeing now. He was still doing it back then. So they let him off then, but now all of a sudden it's changed. Why? 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 Who knows? Who fucking knows?